Hallelujah. Here's the relief. Right here. I'm telling you, that's why Why you think when you read, the, I love the book of Psalms, because David been through so much, and he always runs to the rock that's higher than him. He always went to the fountain of living water. He always runs to the Lord Jesus Christ, the rock, amen, to stand on. And he always found his answers, always found his stress release. He always found his blessings in that. In that. That's why I read some of the Psalms almost every day, amongst everything else, every day, because that's where... David teaches us how to praise God in spite of all the chaos. And I mean, we don't have the problems he had. You don't have uh, armies all around you wanting to destroy you. You, you don't have uh, all these different attacks coming, people day and night over the walls and everything else trying to have, cause wars. He was surrounded. And when you read his writings, you understand that. But that's why he needed God so bad. And he recognized his need. That's where we're coming up short, I think, sometimes. Which, uh, I can handle this. Uh, I've done this before. And, and i got to do this. God ain't going to help me. Yes, he will if you ask him. He said, you have not because you ask that's not. Right. Right. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we need to ask him. We need to recognize, Lord, I can't do this by myself. That's right. This is bigger than me. This is, this is too much. It's too heavy. Instead, we allow it to depress us. We allow it, the burdens to discourage us, to distract us, to play tricks on our mind. And that's just what the devil, he does his job so well. So well. If you did your job so well, amen, by being a good uh, a student of the word, amen, you'd be overcoming these things. Instead, they're, they're overcoming you. A lot of you. Not everybody. I don't think I'm talking to everybody, but then again, maybe I am. Because we all need to hear this from the pulpit to the pew. Amen? Amen. It works. But it only works if you work it. A lot of my counseling is that, whoa with me. And whoa, whoa, whoa. And, oh, they did, blah, blah, blah. Oh, all these crybabies. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't take that lightly. But, and then I ask him, are you reading the Word? Well, uh, you know, yeah, I read the Word. When was the last time? Well, two weeks ago. But I, I picked up a few verses. It stop right there. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. Amen. If you went to the Word first, you might not have to come to me. Now, if you want to come to me and you need to, that's fine. But you need to go to Him first. Amen. Now, you want to vent? That's different. I can put the phone here and go about my business, come back in 20 minutes, you're still venting, we're good. <laughs> I'll get something done. <laughs> now if you want counseling so there's a difference between venting and counseling mm -hmm. counseling is I'm asking you pastor for your advice according to the word of God and pick your brain and your, the wisdom that God gave you the experience that you have and I'm going to do what you tell me to do according to the will and work of God that's counseling that's right. but if I tell you something and you go do the opposite or just ignore it that's venting mm -hmm. you just had to get it out and that's bad enough, but then you vent to me, then I find out you vented to ten other people in the church. Mm -hmm. Same a thing. Mm -hmm. Same a result. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So you see the difference between the people? Yeah. And nine out of ten times they're not reading the word. How come it's quiet in here today? Mm. <laughs> I can hear a pin drop. <laughs> My Lord. I know I'm hitting a nerve. <laughs> Woo. Because most people, in one way or another, are struggling, let's be honest. Amen. Struggling with something. Amen. Someone. Struggling at least with the devil. Big but you're struggling. We in one are. area or another. We all are. Woo. Unless, of course, you're a Mighty Mouse. <laughs> you ever see Mighty Mouse on television? Never. He always wins. Any Mighty Mouse in here? <laughs> we got church mice, but any Mighty Mouse? <laughs> mm -hmm. How about Batman? Batman always wins. <laughs> Say, huh? Batman always wins. And Robin. Batman and Robin. <laughs> Spider-Man. Climbing up these walls. Just little spider webs. Always wind. Superwoman. 
I think she died. But anyway, super <laughs> woman. Yeah. Ain't so super. She always won. One man too. Superman. My God, who could go into a telephone booth and come out like Superman? Man, <laughs> hey, that's something, ain't it? <laughs> Only to find out that it wasn't real after all. It broke my heart <laughs> more than it was in a Santa Claus. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I remember when I was a kid, we, we had a garage in the back of the house. I was growing up about seven, eight years old, and Superman was a big thing at the time. And, Black and white TV, that's how old I am. But anyhow, it's another sermon. So Superman comes on, boy, and I get all inspired. You know, like we should be inspired by the Word of God these days. But I was inspired. And as soon as it was off, I'd run in the kitchen, grab one of my mother's dish rags, whether it was clean or dirty, it didn't matter. i put it on, I'd run out back, get on top of the garage, which was about seven, eight foot high. Oh. Had a little dirt pile on the bottom, and I kept jumping. <laughs> I kept jumping. Never could fly, but I kept trying. <laughs> Thought there was something wrong with me. I kept trying, of jumping and jumping and jumping. Maybe that's why I got bad vertebrae today. I don't know. I just kind of go bam, bam, bam. You know what I mean? For hours. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Only to find out they were pretend. Phonies, if you please. Yes. Wannabes. Couldn't fly an inch. <laughs> I learned all over the world and catching speeding locomotives and dodging bullets and everything else. Never did work. No, no. Woo. How many so glad you came today? Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else yeah. dumb like that? Yeah. <laughs> you wasn't supposed to raise your hand, but anyhow. I don't know who your idol is, but I know who my hero is now. Amen. And he's real. Amen. It's not a phony. Amen. My hero is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Make it clear. Praise God. Woo, he can fly too, glory to God. Hallelujah. One day I really am going to be able to fly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Without a cape. <laughs> Glory be to God. No dish rag. No. Amen. Just going to hear that trumpet. Hear that sound. Come on up here. Now I'm out of here. Glory be to God. How many is going with me? Yeah. What about the rest of you? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, make believe. Uh, my God is real. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the Bible says, when I was thinking about all those things, I, I think I said, that's why the Bible says that youth is wasted on the young. Don't the young ones do the dumbest stuff? We understand that because they're young and dumb. But when you see the adult do young, dumb stuff, you know what I'm saying? When they should know better. We all do dumb stuff. Like Paul said, now Paul was talking to the adults. Paul said, when I was young, when I was a child, I did childish things. Right. Like jump off the garage roof. I mean, yeah, how dumb was that? That was childish. <laughs> Amen? Because I didn't know any better. But now that I'm older and more mature, I don't do childish things anymore. Amen. You ain't going to see me jumping off any garage roofs anymore. <laughs> Amen? I don't care how fancy the cape is. Because I know better. You see, and we should know better spiritually. Amen. We should know better. And how many, you know, you know, you listen, you sit under this ministry, you know better. Because we only preach the word here. Amen. Amen. And you know better. You know what works, what don't work. You know how to get to victory and what, and what, does, what, what hinders the victories in your life. But we have to apply the principles. We have to apply the word of God. Yes. Again, it only works if you work it. Amen? Yes. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. See, it's the devil's job to keep you depressed. Mm -hmm. right. Why do you think Jesus said when he comes in, you don't let him take residence. You don't let him camp out. Mm -hmm. He said you have to resist him and you got to rebuke him. And he promises us that he'll flee from us. He'll flee from you. You can't entertain his thoughts. Amen. You can't let him get away with just about murder. Because I've seen as a chaplain for many years in jails and prisons, I've seen what happens when people allow Satan to take residence in their mind. And then it goes about 11 inches down into their heart. And they become haters and murderers. Uh, and all kinds of things. I remember one time when we had the center on Landis Avenue years ago. Very powerful ministry. 
and uh, we were feeding about 50 uh, people every morning breakfast and kids would come in and uh, there was a poor neighborhood and they, wasn't, they wouldn't have any lunch for the day so we'd make them bag lunches and they'd take their lunch out but the story I'm getting to is <clears throat> two little young a boy and a girl maybe just starting school five six years old and their daddy his name was Moses as much as I can tell you but his daddy wasn't saved and but because we showed them love and compassion and we would had Bible studies every day all kinds of things going on for everybody young and old so the father started coming he'd bring the kids and he very humble man on the outside but he had a bad temper Horrible, horrible temper. The devil loves people with bad tempers. I know I had one. Loves it. He would just push my button, pull my string, and ha! Ah! I was all his. You don't believe that? That's my wife and kids. I jumped through doors. I wasn't Superman. <laughs> I was after. I mean, crazy stuff. Okay? So this guy had a bad temper, but I was working on him. I had counseled him and his wife. He, he was very, 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 very overjealous of his wife. They were a young couple. And he was very jealous. And she didn't really give him a whole lot of reasons to be jealous, but it was in his own mind. So he finally one day he broke down and knelt down at the altar, gave his heart to the Lord. And he tried. He was trying to serve God. Amen. The devil knew it. <clears throat> he lost him. Because he was a good disciple for the devil. So next thing I know I, he, he's starting to get more jealous, more jealous. I said, well, Evidently, that seed didn't take too, too good of a root there. Oh, no. And I seen him one day out front, and we had a big oak tree out front of the place, and he was punching it till his oh. knuckles were bleeding and raw. Oh, I said, oh, wow. here we go again. I guess he got jealous of his wife. And that's exactly what happened. So I went out there talking to him, and blood in his eyes, man. He wanted to kill. Wow. And at that time, I was a chaplain in the police department, so one of the police officers were going by and I said, hey, listen, come here. I talking to him. I said, listen, man, this guy's a ticking time bomb. He's going to kill his wife one of these days. And he said, Rev, what can I do about it? He said, we can't do anything until after the fact. I said, too late then, man. But that's how the law operates, you know. He said, I can't arrest him for punching the tree. I can't arrest him because he's making uh, mild threats. I said, well, I, he told me he's going to kill her. So I can't do nothing. And that was how it went. Another week goes by, and he was he back totally backslidden. <clears throat> and he found out that his wife was babysitting for someone else, friend of theirs with a couple more kids. And he went over to where she was, broke in, because she called the cop, but they got there too late. One block from the police station. Got there too late. He stabbed her 27 times. Oh, oh my God. Needless to say, she died. Left oh, two little my. babies behind. Grandparents took them. <clears throat> and like I said, I was a chaplain at the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department at the time, so I went to.